What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back to another day in the brew lab with me, Lone Fox, your brewmaster in chief. And today in the brew lab, I have some news for you. For those of you who have been sleeping under a rock, um, World Championships if of 2021 is only about three days away. And um, out of the blue this afternoon, news flash, the deck list submissions by the world champs or, you know, the aspiring world champs has been leaked. It's all over Twitter and um, it is now no longer a secret what the players will be bringing to the world championship event. And um, I thought it would be a great idea before everybody else jumps on the same one to get ahead of the curve and test out some of these uh, lists that the best minds magic has to offer have brought to the table. Um, I'm going to be doing this from now until world champs. I'm going to be playing it in best of three, which gives me an opportunity to try a few different things. Well, first of all, to test out their decks, because this is going to be what's going to set the meta uh, probably over the next little while. Whether they ban our runes epiphany or not will definitely change that. But if they don't, then these deck lists are going to be what is dominating the format uh, over the next, uh, you know, the coming months. And so I thought, um, well, first of all, let me show you them one by one. I'll do slightly shorter videos so that I can get out multiple ones of them a day. Uh, my personal choice uh, for World Championship uh, title this year was Gabriel Nassif, the French Hall of Famer, uh, also known as Yellow Hat. <laughs> he's uh, one of my favorites. I really wish that he wins it this time around. I think he deserves it. He's a phenomenal player. He has incredible amount of experience. Uh, if you don't know who I'm talking about, go just get, um, search up Yellow Hat uh, MTG in your YouTube. He's got a YouTube channel. He's got a Twitch channel. Um, he streams all kinds of magic content. It's not just arena. He plays MTGO. He plays draft. He play. He plays everything. Every single format. He's like in there, and he's so knowledgeable, and uh, also really funny guy and, and uh, entertaining to watch. So go check him out. But um, I'm gonna start because I picked him as my my champion. I would like to start this um, couple of days worth of world championship deck lists. Uh, videos that I'm going to put on my channel with his. Um, so without any further ado, here it is. Gabriel Nassif's Grixis Turns. Grixis Epiphany. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, this... This list in particular, with a few slight changes here and there, was brought by four people out of the total of 16 that um, are going to be taking part in the event. And um, so it, it's, it's actually 25% of the field is Grixis Epiphany. So, you know, Crokies was right. <laughs> Believe it or not. And uh, what the first thing that shocks me is how different it is when these guys are building decks for a world championship event compared to how I build my decks for best of one. There's so many one ofs one Blood Chief's Thirst, one Power Word Kill, one Cathartic Pyre, one Syndiclasm, one Smoldering Egg. Like, I always, you know, one Demon Bolt. There's so many one ofs in the deck. Uh, one Burn Down the House. And what I've noticed, because I've already played a few games, and let me tell you already, I won both of them. Well, so I won four games total. I went 100% win rate with the deck so far on the ladder, and I played because I played it in best of three. I beat both of my opponents in, turn, in game one, game two, just bam, bam, bam. I guess people like haven't been uh, looking at Twitch yet, and uh, I beg your pardon on Twitter, and they're just not aware that the lists have been leaked. But um, yeah, I've. <laughs> been uh, absolutely th thrashing people with this thing and what i noticed is that you top you, you tend to top deck something different every turn 
and uh, it's surprisingly reliable and consistent which kind of goes against everything that I thought about uh, this type of thing where you run one ofs and the cool thing is it's always something different and it's always an answer and if the brightest minds in magic have crafted this list it's because it is specifically tailored to beat on the other big decks in the format, uh, i.e. mono white and mono green, which are pretty much forming the entirety of the rest of the field other than, uh, oh, I, I beg your pardon, and is it turns or dragon, uh, is it dragons? Or, you know, there's only like two outliers. There's one guy who's bringing an Azorius list, the Japanese guy, which he always brings something cool and unique to the table. And then I think there's uh, one or two other decks that are, you know, not the ones we were expecting. But pretty much everybody else has fallen into the categories that I've been complaining about on yesterday's video. Mono white, mono green, is it turns? This is the only one that sort of came out of the left field and surprised most people except for croquis i guess he kind of knew it um <clears throat> uh in the form of grixis uh turns and uh it's yeah i mean it's it's been doing the thing right so what has he got in the sideboard first of all because we're going to be playing best of three which is something i've been wanting to do on the channel for a while and i hope this video is well received but uh they're running four malevolent hermits Two Mind Flayers. Interesting. Three Cyclone Summoners. I'm still not entirely sure what you're going to be sideboarding the stuff in for. Another copy of Duress. There's already two on the main main deck. Uh, one copy of Go Blank. Uh, sorry, two copies of Go Blank, which is pretty damn sweet because that handles, like, you know, in the uh, mirror match where uh, Lear, and this is. This is the main card of the deck, guys. Like, who would have thunk it? Maybe CGB had it come and, you know, already uh, foresaw this. But this card is incredible. Your entire graveyard is just now recastable. Of course that's good. Every single instant and sorcery in your graveyard has flashback. And that flashback cost is only equal to the card's mana cost. So in the mirror, I'm assuming that's where you side in the go blank. Because you just don't get rid of the entire opponent's graveyard. Uh... One copy of Unexpected Windfall, I guess, in a matchup where he needs a little bit more card draw or something like that. And, uh, yeah. So, and a, a singular copy of Soul Shatters in there. Interesting. Interesting to see. We'll be playing it now. Uh, you know, I'll probably manage to squeeze in a couple of games on the uh, best of three ladder with the list before i run out of time for this video i don't want them to go too long and i don't want you guys to get too bored but um we will be testing out you know what what needs to be sideboarded in against which deck uh live and i'll be figuring it out alongside you guys so grixis turns uh four copies fading hope bounce uh, target creature to its owner's hand if its mana value was three or less scry one often now i've used it uh twice in those four games i played where you're bouncing back your own leer to save it from targeted removal or sweepers um then one copy of blood chief's thirst uh we all know what this does i talked about it so many times on my channel it's one of my favorite removal spells it's interesting that they've only got a one of mm, then we've got duress Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose target uh, a non-land, uh, sorry, a non-creature non-land card from it. That player discards that card. I guess you're aiming at the opponent's Alruin's Epiphanies, mostly. Another annoying uh, interaction that you want away. Spikefield Hazard is being run by everybody because of the new mm, threat. The uh, Disturbed Mechanic Malevolent Hermit, which has one toughness you spike field hazard it bye bye you cannot disturb it uh if it would die this turn exile it instead so i've noticed that pretty much all of the lists that uh, splash red or have red are running at least a couple of copies of spike field hazard um, and it's specifically in there to deal with the malevolent hermit then we're running two copies of juari disruption one power word kill one cathartic pyre three damage to target creature planeswalker discard up to two cards draw that many cards Syndiclasm, one copy, one small ring egg, four expressive, expressive iterations. So you can really tell how important it is for these top players to be 
filtering their top deck, making sure that they always have the right thing in hand when they need it. There's four copies of Expressive Iteration, three copies of Memory Deluge. That is a lot of uh, filtering, a lot of card draw, and it's um, it's been I, I, like now having played the list a few times, I can tell you it's incredible. You you always got what you need. Then there's the new card from Midnight. Uh, Hunt, Galvanic Iteration, which is the new copy spell, except this one's got flashback. So you could essentially flash this back uh, and cast it for a total of 5 mana and then cast something like a Demon Bolt or some whatever on top of it. And, and you would uh, end up getting 3 uh, Demon Bolts for the price of 1. So, uh, you know, if, if your Demon Bolt is foretold, that would cost you 6 and you could 4 damage to 3 different targets not bad or you know uh, it's really in here to um storm off with our runes epiphany which is our win con uh, of course i mean it's grixis uh, turns this is the main card in the deck that uh it's it's gonna be probably the most played card in uh, the world championship event and uh, we're going to be trying to bring the opponent's life total to zero with Alrun's Epiphanies, Little Birdies, and all of the Storm Giants. And maybe the occasional three damage from Lear. And there's also some Devil Tokens that can be made with the Burn Down the House. That's really it. And of course, the Smoldering Egg can turn into Ashmouth Dragon. That's it. I mean, that, those, that, that's the only things in the main board that like can actually get the opponent down. So they're quite like slow, sluggish games, control type uh, games where you need to uh, chip the opponent down slowly but surely until eventually you can maneuver them into a position where you can get multiple Alruns Epiphanies off and then you just attack them with birdies in the air. But once we go into the sideboard, then there's a little bit more interesting stuff. I mean... I mean, the, the Malevolent Hermit, like, uh, you know, we, we learned our lesson from something like Bone Crusher Giant, where you have a removal spell stapled onto a body. This is a counter spell that's stapled onto a body that also is recursive and has really relevant text on the uh, disturbed side, which says that non-creature spells you control can't be countered. Uh, you know, this in conjunction with Lear, which says each instance uh, spells can't be countered, Sunny just uh, makes it really good against the guy because you'll notice the only counter spell in the whole deck is Jari Disruption, and of course the Malevolent Hermit in the sideboard. But uh, so probably the other guys that are playing is it turns have you know Sword Cummings and uh, uh, other counter spells like Jari Disruption, Test of Talents. Uh, that's, you know, Lear and the backside of the Malevolent Hermit, of the Malevolent Geist, will uh, be making sure that that is not a problem. And that, which is why they're running so light on counter spells, because spells can't be countered. That includes the opponent's spells. So you, there's not really much point in running any counter spells, um, except for perhaps if you catch them in the early game, Juari, then, then all the better. Uh, and, uh, yeah, okay, so now I'm getting into blabbing mode. Let's, uh, jump into the games. I mean, the only other interesting new card here is the inclusion of three copies of the Celestis legendary artifact, three drop. If it's neither night nor day, it becomes day as the Celestis enters the battlefield. Then you can tap it to add a mana of any color, but then you can pay three, and if it's night, it becomes day, or if it's day, it becomes night. And you can activate this only as a sorcery. And whenever day becomes night, tonight becomes day, you gain one life and you draw a card. And if you do, you discard a card. So oftentimes, uh, the, uh, well, always really, uh, the main time that I've noticed this, and I, now I realize why it's in the list. I just couldn't, I didn't understand why they were doing this night and day thing where there's no other cards that really care about that in the entire deck. It's there because if the opponent double spells on his turn, it switches back to night or day. And then you get to do this before your upkeep. So uh, you can draw a card. If you don't like it, you discard it. And then you'll draw another one um, off the top of the deck with your draw steps. So really more, even more ways of making sure that you have the right thing in your hand when you want it. Three copies of the Celestis. And we got three, one copy of Prismari Command. I've already talked about the Deluge. And that's it. I mean, that's the deck. Let's jump into some games. As usual, at this point in the video, while I'm queuing into my first match, 
I would like to ask everybody who is watching this to kindly consider to subscribe to the channel. I have recently broken the 180 subscriber mark. We're getting so close to 200 subs. When we do, I will be triggering a giveaway. I'm giving away some cosmetics and Bob Ross lands and things like that. If you would like to take part in said giveaway, have a look in the video description down below. There is a little link that says um, giveaway video information or video information giveaway video. <laughs> uh, click on that. It's a little five minute watch. Once you've finished watching it, you will know everything that there is to know about the giveaway and you can take part. Whew. Hmm. Then, of course, don't forget to do all the other good YouTube stuff. It can really help a brother out, and it's free. You just uh, like the video, leave me some comments. What do you think about, uh, you know, my gameplay, uh, the deck that I'm playing? You know, have you had a look yourself at the uh, leaks that have come out? What do you think? And, uh, yeah. If you would like to be notified of future uploads, then uh, don't forget to oof, let's keep that for the inevitable. What's her name now? Renan7. That's going to be coming our way shortly. Almost certainly. Hmm. Three drop, huh? That's that's, that's annoying. That's all hell. Yeah, like I would... Ooh, 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 another one. That's uh, very, 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 very bad. Very, very bad. Probably play this on blue next. Can we survive? Can we survive? And what will be we will we be sideboarding in to beat uh, this guy? That is the question. Because I think we're already pretty screwed if they've got any way of <laughs> pumping these guys up. That's eight nine damage. Oh god, that's good. The other player that has brought, uh, there's two players that have brought mono green aggro to the format, uh, to, to Worlds. It's um, Paolo Vitor Damo de Rosa, the reigning champion, as well as um, Seth Manfield, also an incredible player. Okay, so, mono green, what are we sideboarding in? Hmm. Interesting. I really have no idea. <laughs> um, probably another pile or word kill. Syndiclasm is going to do nothing. So another power word kill. Um. Hmm. Probably duress is kind of useless in the matchup. Probably also the spike field hazard, but it is in there also because there's only 24 lands in the deck. 23, sorry. Um, and they're you know using the Jawari and the spike field hazards as lands. So uh, tough one. One a green, huh? One a green with uh, the unnatural growth. Hmm. I honestly don't know. Maybe just a soul shatter. That was an incredibly quick win. We got our asses handed to us by Cody or Nah. Mr. Cody. You want to play first? And I'll keep that. <clears throat> I 
I can uh, stay right there. Not too bothered. Bye bye. <laughs> so he's probably going to play the uh, Briarbridge tracker. Or he might do the untap Snowland and then bring in the old growth troll. So let's let him uh, have the turn and then uh, decide from there. Yeah, he's going to go for the troll. Off. We definitely have preferred a second uh, source of blue mana there, but uh, what can you do? I still haven't looked at the full list of, from Paolo Vitor and uh, Seth Mansfield. I wonder if they're running so broken man this list mono green is just ridiculous this looks pro this is probably <laughs> pvddr's list right there Where's my blue source, please? Like, I needed it yesterday. I'm not entirely sure. Like, I mean, I guess they just thought there wouldn't be too much mono green. Which is weird, because, I mean, Gab is one of the best players on the planet. He must have foreseen how much green there would be in the format. What in the sideboard is in there to beat on the mono green guys i don't know there's even nothing to get rid of artifacts like surely they knew there'd be a hell of a lot of a seeker's chariots going around i need a blue land like i need it and i need it now We've already lost. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think uh, they might have like been onto something. Paolo Vitor is the current world champ. I think he knows something we do not know. Clearly. completely destroyed by mono green like didn't even put up a fight i was uh, an absolute freaking disaster <laughs> so eh, maybe there was a uh, a little uh, lapse in sight there or maybe i just don't know what to sideboard in but i feel like there was very little we could have done there i have a feeling that these guys mostly prepared their decks to go up against is it turns which I'm hoping will be our next opponent and not another mono green matchup because then that'll just be an absolute freaking disaster. <clears throat> ah. Usually people with this uh, avatar play mono green. 
Okay, a little bit more lands. A smoldering egg in the opening hand. Let's give it a try. Mm, pardon me. Snow-covered forest. Snow-covered forest. Cool sleeves, buddy. Aborson 7. Oh, God. Here we go again. Okay, Cynic. Let's see if this matchup is any better. The Murasa. Does that feel good or what? Bye bye, at Seeker's Chariot. Off you go. Just gonna just play the Ren. Busted man, so freaking busted. No one bought Simic to Worlds, not one player. It's interesting that here comes a uh, storm the festival. Where's the blue lands, mate? See this chariot, blah, 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 blah. Unbelievable bullshit, man. Just unbelievable. That's game. Just ridiculous, man. Just ridiculous. Okay, so, I mean, what the hell? I won my first two matches, like, boom, just shredded them. And now I'm getting my ass handed to me. Um, probably want to bring in the Malevolent Hermit. And uh, sideboard out something. Oh my goodness. Well, no Juaris. No hazards. That uh, means we've only got 23 lands in the deck. I honestly don't understand. Like... How could they have, uh, I guess they have insider information with regards to, you know, how many, what are the chances that they'll be playing against a deck that they've specifically built their deck to sideboard around. That wasn't even close. Twice in a row now, like we just got completely destroyed. Love Bone Crusher Giant. Lotus Cobra is just 
come back to play. Prosperous and Keeper. Just a full on ramp package. of library exile Leyland duress bye bye he's brought in the test of talents which we do need to play around now I probably should have gotten that but I just did not want more threats on the field before we can figure out how to deal with them Got a fight spell of some kind. Sure. Just gonna get rid of my hole with his field. No? Okay. Let's go for another Galvanic. He's got the three to pay, unfortunately. <laughs> but at least he's used it up on that and not on our epiphany. So that's okay. Navigating my way through these games is uh, much harder than I thought. You know, I'm just going in blind. I've never played any of these lists. Okay. What could he possibly have? Comes the festival. I'm so surprised there isn't any uh, Simic ramp in the format. I guess they thought it was a bad matchup against. Uh, is it turns? But uh, so far, I'm getting my ass handed to me by this guy. Absolutely destroyed. At least we can do this. Imagine he's got another test of talents. I'll lose my mind. Holy shit, dude. Unbelievable, man. What a crock of shit was that, man. Come on, dude. Go fucking jump in a lake. Part of my French. What a lot of rubbish. Absolute crock of shit. So there we go. Two losses back to back. Woo! With uh, Gabriel Nassif's list. I'm not that impressed, if I have to be perfectly honest. 
I was kind of hoping to uh, run into the uh, matchup that it seems like they've prepared for the most in the form of is it turns. Maybe I'm just uh, not a good enough magic player to see it, but that was a pretty convincing uh, couple of losses there against Mono Green and Simic. I think I'm going to jump into one last uh, best of three there just to see if something I can still learn as I go. Of course, only piloting a deck, this will be my fourth game with it, is nowhere near enough to figure it out. Like, what is a Cyclone Summoner there for? Is it to beat upon the uh, Mono Green guys? Maybe. It's a big body. It's a really expensive body. <clears throat> what have I missed? What am I missing? Hmm. Interesting. I'm gonna keep that. Just in case they get rid of one of our leers. Okay. We're playing clerics. I was hoping to catch the, uh, uh, what's it called? The Pyre of Heroes or something. Okay, so, I mean, they've got two Righteous Valkyries and the Aura. Oh, God. Getting my ass handed to me so far. Like, just completely destroyed. And I feel like there are not enough blue sources in the deck. I'm just being like not and there's so much blue in the sideboard as well. But um okay, let's see here. <clears throat> Clearwater pathway. River glide pathway. There's one island in the whole deck. I mean, what are you supposed to do against that? Honestly, like What am I supposed to do against that? God draw from clerics just absolutely destroyed me <sighs> okay so this can't kill angels but it can kill clerics so I um, will keep that what am I supposed to do here what am I supposed to do here <sighs> everything just costs so much I'll never get to it in time I honestly just don't understand what the hell these people are doing. This is the deck from the one of the best players on the planet. Clearly, I am missing something. Okay, well, Duress can go. Let's get rid of one epiphany, bring in another go blank. I think uh, hand hate will be good in this matchup. But again, you can see how they have clearly not prepared to play, you know, on ladder with these decks. It's really been prepared to play against, again, not a single blue source. <sighs> wow, man. I, I, I'm stunned at how rubbish this is going so far for me on the ladder. Finally. Oh, 
They've always got it, don't they? Hand. Feel like an um, additional copy of burn down the whatever burn down the house would have been a, a good way to go about things to the Juari. Now we start taking some turns. Hopefully that's kind of good enough. My old man. What are you looking for? A light bulb? Multiple turns. That should do the trick. Uh, let's get rid of you. And let's keep swinging. Hopefully that's enough to do something. There's, uh... So far, looking pretty bad. Nice. Okay. Very nice. But like, always just sort of by the skin of our teeth there. It's uh, not like close by any means necessary, you know, by any means. So the opponent is dual casting. Um, let's... Draw some card. Takes my Celestis, which means we cannot cast our runes next turn. Goodness.
getting completely destroyed by this bloody fucking cleric list, man. Oh, for fuck's sakes. completely destroyed like not even a chance i don't even feel like i have the answers it's so weird these lists that uh you know every time i watch these big tournaments i'm like just, just so confused Now we're at the point where not even a burn down the house is going to save us. It's a little bit annoying, guys. What a crap fucking... What a crap deck! <laughs> like, okay, is... Uh, am I missing something? I won the first two ones convincingly against... Uh, I, I played against Azor, uh, Esper Control. I shredded the guy. And then the second match I had was against a mono white guy. And I shredded him. But now, just now, like, we've lost three back-to-back like really badly matches uh, maybe i'm just missing something but we still got a, an hour you know a little bit of time to go before the uh, one hour mark is reached on the video so let's give it a whirl and see what happens please let me know what you think about my gameplay like what i felt like i i'm doing the best i can with the cards that i've got in my hand uh I really don't feel like I did anything particularly wrong there. Shuffler's fine. Shuffler's fine. <sighs> Dear God. What a crock of shit. Holy crap, man. What the fuck is that? One hand with no cards, with no lands, and then the second hand with only lands. Just unbelievable. This bullshit. We have to deal with this crap on a regular basis. Makes me just so annoyed. Not enough removal. No answers. I just don't get it. I really don't get it. <clears throat> I 
That was a misplay. This deck feels like crap. Like, I don't like it. It's... I don't understand. Uh, it, we will have to see when the um, World Championship comes. We're hosting a watch party on the channel, so come on down. Let's view it together. And uh, see whether I'm missing something. Another cleric build. Probably banishing verse. To my face, straight up. Boom. Again. Two games in a row, boys. That's going to take him to 27, and we are going to lose the game. Just... What can I possibly sideboard in that's going to make this matchup any more favorable? <laughs> like... In Cyclone Summoner? Mind Flayer? No... Hermit, non-creature spells, they're basically playing none. It's just a bunch of creatures. I'm telling you now, the thing that happened here is that they know full well what was supposed to go into the list and what wasn't. And, uh, you know. I don't think I'm I'm that bad of a magic player. I, I honestly think I'm pretty good, right? So like what am I missing here? They knew that no one would bring clerics and so they didn't prepare against it and now I'm just getting my ass handed to me because because of that. Really, really strange. I will get to the bottom of this. I think next up we're just going to play uh, Paolo Vitor Damo de Rosa's uh, creation.
so grindy. Such few win cons. Such few answers against creature decks. It's weird. <laughs> Yay. I feel like this list is incredibly busted. The uh, barracks right now are just so damn good. Brings back the dude. Also fetches other dude from graveyard. I mean, come on. Mardu clerics in the hizzle. Just getting my ass whooped. Brings back the righteous Valkyrie. Or the aura, for that matter. I mean, what the hell? There's nothing I'm going to be able to bring, like, to the table that's going to do anything about this. We're just going to get completely destroyed. There's nothing in the sideboard for this matchup whatsoever. Whatsoever. <laughs> Why even bother? Two clerics in a row. Booyah. Totally wrecked. Just wrecked us. <laughs> what is with the sideboard? What the fuck is going on? What the hell is this? What am I supposed to do? Honestly, blows my mind. What's the point? No, these are for not that count as non creatures. I honestly don't know what the hell I'm supposed to be doing against this list, like... Ooh, power word kill. Try and get some little bit more removal in there, but I mean... This is just... It feels like I'm dead on arrival. Let's put a Mind Flayer in there. For some reason, I don't know what. So weird. Either the leak is wrong, but I don't feel like it is feel like it is a an actual leak the uh, because the guy the you know the, um, the players themselves are posting about it on um twitch uh, on twitter so what am i missing here how can this deck be so crap mind flare I just don't think they were ready for the matchup. You know, I avoid like repeating myself over and over again. But that's just what it feels like. No one's playing clerics, and so they didn't prepare to play clerics. But how would they have known that? I feel like any list that, uh, you know, world champ makes should kind of try to cover most angles. Obviously missed something.
That's gonna help. <clears throat> for sure. Okay. They got such good tech, you know, in the in the clerics class now. There's a lot of cool new cards that are really helping it out. I don't understand why more people didn't bring this to the play to the party. I mean, uh, mono green will get shredded by this. That's a bit of a pity. Could have uh, done something there, but I guess uh, not. At least we get to recast our go blank. Power word kill doesn't hit the righteous Valkyrie, which is just pathetic. I'm at a loss for words. I don't know what the hell's going on there. I can't even kill the Righteous Valkyrie with a Demon Bolt now because of the Paladin class. We need to land off the top and start our runes -ing, as if that's going to get us anywhere. Taking his sweet ass time. It's your black lotus little pesty guy here. Come on. They can't possibly think that that's just going to be it. Right? Surely. Did their computer disconnect from the internet? They're not even looking at their hand properly. Like, they're not even touching things. I don't know. I think they might have disconnected. Aha! And they're back. <clears throat> okay. Now the block. Still not. Bottom of library. Exile.
Of course. Of course. Of course they get the aura. Why not? Eric's are just so good right now. <clears throat> um, okay. Expressive. Hand. Bottom of library. Exile. Uh, we got Cathartic Pyre. Three damage. Boom. Double cathartic pile. So they'll just bring back the Elder Fang Disciple. more convincing there but I mean I really had to struggle and we just got lucky to get the smoldering single copy of smoldering egg in the whole deck it just feels weird man yeah well we got them on this one Pure luck. Pure luck. <laughs> okay. So... Pure luck. Doesn't feel special at all. I would like to actually end up playing against Is It Turns. Which it seems like they've prepared for, uh, and see whether that matchup goes any better. Because so far, nothing special. One, two, three. Ah. All right. Scry. Yeah, I'll keep that.
hand. Bottom of library, exile. Play on black side. Kill Hoffrey. Hotel Epiphany. <clears throat> Past turn. Aura attack. Kill Luminarch Ass Pirate. Attack again. Past turn. He's gonna field the ruin one of our halls of the storm giants, probably. <clears throat> Aura comes back. Okay, now can only do that at sorcery speed. Okay, if we do that, he'll probably get back the war singer. So whatever I mean keep up the pressure pump it up brings back the war singer for sure which we can then kill Feeling pretty sweet about this one, luckily. I mean, again, I'm playing it pretty well. Angel of Destiny. Bye-bye now. Off you go. We win. Sweet as. Finally. Okay, so I mean, clearly the deck was not optimized for the Cleric matchup, as I've already seen all of the decks in the leaks, and no one brought Clerics to the party. So, you know, they, they must have known that ahead of time. They all uh, kind of trying to guess what everybody else is going to bring, and then they're going to try and build their decks specifically to counter those strategies. So my conclusion is that uh, they they made these choices all with a very specific uh, matchups in mind. I am not entirely sure what the Cyclone Summoner is in here for. I'm not entirely sure. <clears throat> yeah, everything else makes perfect sense to me. Okay. Power word kill, stuff like that in here for the mono green. Probably Cyclone Summoners also in here for the mono green matchup. Very little ramp. There's just Celestis, really. It's a, it's a very strange list. And f uh, let me remind you that four people in the top 16 have brought this to the party so there must be something about it that i'm missing uh but that's that's going to be it for today thank you all so much for watching i'm going to be continuing to bring you uh you know world championship decks leaked early between now and the day and to to play them up and down in the best of three ladder and see what happens and um yeah until then Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This is Lone Fox from the Brew Lab, signing out. Peace, y'all.